salty Gulf Coast To the rolling high plains To the piney woods in the east All across our dear Texas Folks need good food to eat Our farmers and ranchers are heroes They've always made Texas great Texas agriculture matters It's the heart of the Lone Star State Oh, Texas got it all, y'all Well, howdy, neighbors. I'm your Texas Ag Culture Commissioner, Sid Miller. Thank you for joining us for another episode of Texas Ag Culture Matters right here on RFD TV. Now today, we're gonna to talk about a form of agriculture that combines the act of growing fish and plants together. Aquaponics is a mixture of aquaculture and hydroponics, and literally speaking, it puts the fish to work. Since aquaponics uses basically the same system as hydroponics, there aren't that many differences in how the system works, except you just add the fish. This particular method of farming refers to integrated production of aquatic fish and plants using the same water resources and nutrient inputs. Simply put, the fish produce nutrient-rich waste that fertilizes the plants, and in return, the plants filter the water that goes back to the fish. The idea of combining fish and vegetable production into an integrated system is far from new. The earliest forms of aquaponics can be traced back to the ancient Aztec people who raised plants on rafts on the surface of a lake, and that was around 1000 AD. Now, while aquaponics has gained momentum over the past few decades, in modern day agriculture, it's still in its infancy. However, research has shown that one benefit of practicing this technique is less water usage. Aquaponic gardens use one-tenth, one-tenth of the water you'd typically use in a regular garden. In a small aquatic-based garden, you can easily grow vegetables like lettuce, kale, okra, maybe even some mint. These vegetables don't need a heavy nutrient input anyway. Now let's join Tammy Arinder as she visits aquatic green farms where adults with disabilities use aquaponics to provide Texans with fresh, organically grown products. Putting fish to work is just another way Texas agriculture matters. Go feed the guineas. Sharon Wells is not your typical farmer. Okay, so there's only one in each pot. Can you do that? Mm -hmm. Yes, you can. You're getting really good at that. As a matter of fact, she's an educator turned greenhouse grower. But these greenhouses are far from traditional as well. There's no soil, only water. This is aquaponics. All of the roots grow directly down in the water. And so our fish eat and they go to the bathroom and they provide ammonia and that ammonia is eaten by bacteria that naturally occur in the water and that bacteria is eaten by another bacteria and pretty soon we get nitrites and nitrates and the plants pick up all of those nitrates and then when the water flows back to the fish it's perfectly clean. Um, so basically it's the same thing that's supposed to be happening in the ground but it happens much quicker. Um, I don't have to water. Wells opened the Aquatic Greens Farm in Bryan in 2013. She had no agricultural background, but following some health issues, she had a desire to eat better. She mentioned to her father-in-law that she'd like to try aquaponics. But he got excited and bought the first greenhouse. And the first greenhouse, as you'll see, is 32 feet by 100. And so that's how we got started. <laughs> She uses goldfish and tilapia, keeping them and raising them in these tanks before transferring them to the growing pods. Basically, any aquatic creature that gives off ammonia um, will work. And so um, we started with tilapia. We kind of struggled this time of year keeping the water warm enough for them because they are warm water fish. Um, but then we also have the goldfish and they eat and go to the bathroom and provide all the nutrients we need for our plants. Eight years later, she's growing everything from lettuces to green onions, from cauliflower to kale, depending on the time of year. And another unique aspect to this operation is her help. People who have disabilities, strengths and weaknesses come and we learn about taking care of the farm. We make crafts and things like that. Um, eventually, the goal is to become self-sustaining so that I can pay the workers that come out here and that we can afford to keep everything going. With Wells' special education background, she's married the idea of nurturing plants and nurturing people. 
Brit. We were out at the farmer's markets and I saw some moms of some students that I'd had years ago and they just started coming out and I started teaching them how to do things at the farm. And now, eight years later, I have 28 adults who have disabilities who come out and they're trained to do just about everything at the farm. Jacob is a regular at the ag farm and where some might find weeding, yes, there's still a need for weeding around the raised beds to keep pests at bay, monotonous, he loves it. Well, I think the farm is the most funnest thing that I like, that, that I like in my life. And, and from my standpoint, is that is that the farm is one of the is 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 the one of the most fun I I I would say the most fun educational thing thing in in the whole environment and and why not? The weeds, the grass. We're gonna take it and go feed the guineas, okay? Jacob and others have helped expand the operation. It's not just plants, herbs, and vegetables, but now they have a retail store with value-added products, most of which the students had a hand in crafting, giving them a sense of pride and purpose. Um, but even after we lost things in a freeze several years ago, um, and I was discouraged and thinking, why am I growing produce right now? Um, my workers were excited and just had great attitudes about coming back to work and so it's 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 neat to see how much they've grown and changed even with communication and their fine and gross motor skills it's it's great in Bryan, Texas. I'm Tammy Arinder for Texas Agriculture Matters. Well, thanks, Tammy. Today, it's my pleasure to have Josh Ducey join me. Josh serves as the executive director of the Aquaponics Association. Josh, thanks, thanks for being with us today. Thanks so much, Commissioner Miller. Well, let's start off. Just tell us a little bit about yourself. Sure, yeah. So, name's Josh Ducey, like you said. I'm from Virginia originally, uh, based in Oklahoma right now, working for a company called Symbiotic Aquaponic. Got a master's degree from Kentucky State University um, in aquaculture and aquatic sciences uh, back in 2018 to 2020 and um, focused a lot on aquaponics whenever I was there. And that really propelled me into the industry. Haven't looked back ever since. So That's great. Yeah. Well, now tell us a little bit about this aquaponics association. A lot of people probably may not even ever heard of it or yeah. know what it is. Yeah, absolutely. So <clears throat> we're the largest nonprofit um, in the country probably in the world representing aquaponics. And so um, aquaponics is huge in North, North America. We, North America makes up about 50% of the market. And so having the association there serving as an advocate um, for the farmer, for the industry, you know, working with federal agencies. We also put on a, um, a conference each year. Um, this year it's actually gonna be in Santa Fe, New Mexico from September 15th through the 17th. Um, looking at potentially Dallas next year too. So, you know, we're always trying to connect the community, um, make connections between researchers, farmers, you know, improve the industry through those connections and just, you know, really tell everyone what aquaponics is and okay. well, how it can benefit. Let's, let's break that down. Let's yeah. tell people what aquaponics is. Most of our listeners probably know, a lot of them probably don't know exactly what aquaponics is so just kind of explain what that is what what is that process yeah absolutely so it's a it's an awesome technology to grow food with but pretty much simply put it's the combination of aquaculture and hydroponics between the two you get aquaponics now we're trying to redefine it a little bit um, to individualize ourselves as an industry um, right now we're either aquaculture or hydroponics but it's a completely different system. And so the new definition we're going for that we're trying to endorse is um, the polyculture of plants, microorganisms, fish, in a controlled or selected symbiotic environment. And so really what's happening in these systems is that you're feeding the fish, they are excreting nutrients in the form of um, pee and poop in simple terms. <laughs> and, That's an uh, interesting yeah. way to put it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I love, I love always just putting it that, that simple, yeah. And, um, and then micro beneficial bacteria in the system are converting these uh, waste products into a usable plant nutrient. Then the plants uptake those nutrients, grow, 
and then that water can then be recirculated back. And so super, super water efficient, very efficient in terms of nutrient utilization. Um, and it's, it's a great multidisciplinary tool too. You've got so many things involved going on at the, at the same time. So, You know, we've been doing this a long time. Our, the Native Americans taught us how to take a fish, you know, and put it in the ground and then plant your corn on top of it. But this expands on that basically. So we're using, we're still using fish to grow a crop, but we're you just using it, uh, uh, but the manure, the fertilizer that they, the nutrients that they produce, and then we eat the fish too, right? <laughs> eat exactly. them both. Exactly. Eat the lettuce and the fish to have yeah. a fish taco. Exactly. So it works out pretty, pretty good. <laughs> hey folks, uh, we're gonna have to take a break, but we'll be right back with more on aquaponics. Stay tuned. Welcome back, folks, to Texas Ag Culture Matters. We're talking aquaponics today with Josh Ducey. Now, Josh, for our viewers out there, explain the difference between aquaponics, hydroponics. That's a lot of ponics to understand. <laughs> What's the difference? Sure, and yeah, and we certainly have a branding issue as well. Many people you'll hear in the aquaponics industry say that. You say aquaponics, people are like, yeah, hydroponics, I know what that is, but it's completely different. Um, we're generating all of our most of our nutrients from fish. Um, and that's the biggest difference right there. Because of that, you know, we're not allowed to use these synthetic pesticides or insecticides oh, really? or anything like that because it's gonna harm the other organisms in the system. And so on top of growing plants hydroponically, we're growing fish in an aquaculture system. And through the combination, we are completely different. Um, now you can certainly take a decoupled aquaponic system, which is just a aquaculture system by itself. You use that waste, contain it in a bioreactor mineralization chamber, then you can actually grow plants hydroponically with that. Now that's a different way of doing it. Typically it's all connected though and it's all research. Sounds like a lot more work to yeah. me. <laughs> <laughs> really, I mean, whenever it comes down to it, you're just feeding fish and you'll hear everyone say it, the ones that really love it, I mean, Day in, day out, all you're doing is feeding fish, and that's the best part about the job right there. You know, I'm, I'm from West Texas, and, and we'd say this is a twofer. <laughs> you're right, you get two for one. You're doing, you got one greenhouse, a growing operation that produces two products, the yeah. vegetables and the fish, right. with the same effort that you're putting into one, basically. Maybe a little more effort, but, but not, not, not a lot. So wh what are the benefits of, of aquaponics? So organic production, localized production, that's huge, right? Is it always organic? Would it always, it, for the most of the so time? So most of the time, most of the just simple practices that you're doing in aquaponics are just pretty much organic standards. Now there's, you know, you still have to go through the regulations, the process, and all, you know, all that to get certified organic, but. And I, I would come do that at your place, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. We, we do the organic certification. Okay, there yeah. you go, yeah, yeah. So um, there is a big dispute though with is aquaponics, should that be considered organic? Um, you know, as of now, it, it still is considered organic, but um, you know, it's technically it's not directly in soil, so it's not enhancing the lands. But if you think about it, you can grow as much as uh, on 30 acres within, you know, three acres of greenhouse. And so what can then you do with the 27 acres? You can restore that, you can, you know, you can add back to it, you know, the fish carcasses that you're not using just like the Native Americans, go dig up the soil and go put it back in and restore that land. And so in that sense, you know, it, it should still be qualified as organic and we're using natural, you know, ingredients to, to grow what we're growing, so. All right, this, this system of growing, as we move forward, we're in a technology age now. Uh, we lose about a farm a week. We continue have to, uh, our population is growing. Agriculture is always faced with having to produce more with less. Where does aquaponics fit in into the big scheme? Yeah, that's a great question. It's like you said too, population's growing. Um, there's resource 
deficiencies showing up across the board too. You know, the COVID-19 as well, the pandemic really showed some some flaws in our system, right? And so having that localized impact, but you know, specifically the, the biggest thing I always preach is that the water, right? We're using about 1% replacement of the total system. Really, volume. 1%, yep. that's it? Yep, and so, if you th so Texas, right? Fastest growing state in the country, you know, by 2030, looking about 5 million people, additional, you know, in, in yeah. Texas, in addition total to Total of what, 35 million, yeah, exactly. another 5 million. Yep, yeah. exactly, and so, <clears throat> How are you going to, you know, to me, that's an opportunity for the, for the ranchers and for the people in Texas growing, right? You know, who's going to feed those people? Um, do it with the system that is water efficient, right? By 2030, you're also going to need, a, they estimate, another 3 trillion gallons of water for irrigation purposes, right? Wow. That, I looked it up before this, uh, there's a lake in, in Dallas area called White, White Rock Lake, I believe is what it is. Six million gallons of water in that. So that's 500 of those lakes additional wow, water. Cool. Yeah. So you're going to need efficient systems, right? You guys are, I don't want to get into your legal issues by any means, but I mean, I know there's big disputes right now with the Colorado River between all the states. And so, right. you know, how do you get around that? And like you said. One of the things we, ha we haven't mentioned, but uh, agriculture, one of our, our biggest problems other than a shortage of water, which this addresses, is labor. Uh, you know, it's hard to get labor out way out on a dairy or a cotton farm, but this particular operation, you can put it where the labor lives, right? You yeah. can put it in a metropolitan area. So have, the labor would be uh, less of an issue or, or, or access to labor. So I, I kind of like that. So we're going to wrap up here. My question to you is, why does Texas agriculture matter? <laughs> Stop me if you've heard this before, but... Everything's bigger in Texas, <laughs> there right? There you go. And y'all right. are growing. Y'all are important and centralized too. That's huge, right? Both east, west, you know? So I think that's a location, uh, geography. The people here are great too. So I think that's why it matters the most. Well, Josh, thank you for being thank with us so today. Much, You've well, enlightened yeah. my uh, intelligence on, on aquaculture and the difference between that and hyd hydroponics. So thank you and keep, keep doing what you're doing and go, growing that good food for us. Yeah, absolutely. Now let's head over to the Go Texan Market at the Houston Livestock Show and Rodeo. And the Go Texan Market is filled to brim with everything from buffalo jerky to candied pecans and all grown right here in the Lone Star State. And hey, you can tell I had a good time at the Go Texan Market this year at the Houston Rodeo. We're lucky to have so many wonderful products and producers that proudly displayed at the Go Texan Market. For over 20 years, the Texas Department of Agriculture's Go Texan program has helped promote products made right here in the Lone Star State. From boots to salsa, Go Texan members make the best stuff on earth. Now, friends, let's take a look at one of these fine Texas businesses and why they are Go Texan proud. Go Texan every day. The look is the hook, but the taste will bring you back every time. <laughs> Our seasonings, they are all natural, no MSGs, no fillers, no additives. Uh, hot sauce, pickled onions, and michelada mix. I get my product from a organic pecan farm in Texas. Our product is a, is a steak-like chew, Texas premium uh, jerky. That goes from eggs in the morning to veggies at night. Uh, yeah, that's, that's basically it. There's a wide variety of opportunities that the Go Texan program presents and helps create to market local Texas businesses. Go Texan is a fantastic opportunity for myself as a Texas-based business. They're putting the word out by having that Go Texan mark, you know, find the mark on there. Just the opportunities that they have given me as a small business person has allowed me to expand all across the nation and even um, internationally as well. <laughs> we can't start that till afternoon. Yeah. <laughs> it's hard enough to start a business and if you want to do it by yourself it's even harder if, if you have the help of go that they help you and guide you what to do inform you on what's out there and put your name out there i mean it's the best way to go it's exceeded our expectations every time we've had to go back to the warehouse and get multiple uh, crates of more product go texan they're awesome people uh, we're proud to be a part of them i wanted to be able to highlight that this is a texas product and pecans are the texas state nut when I say to people, and I get these pecans from a pecan farm in Texas, and I'm a Go Texan member, that makes a difference for people.
I get emails with all the information that I need, like of different events all over Texas, and that's very helpful to startups like me that want to get our name out there. Just purchased um, a small cargo van so I can help me get to shows with some of the products because my business is actually increasing due to GoTexan, and my plate on there is Saver with the GoTexans. When a company is joining our program, they know that we're helping to, to partner with them to promote Texas. Texas agriculture is, is important. Um, they, they know that Texas agriculture matters. So we have something for everyone out there. Sauces and rubs for barbecuing. And then some salsa for uh, just to try. So um, the berry bowl, for, we're going to see family in California this weekend and going to take it to them. <laughs> and then the brie baker for my daughter because she loves to experiment around with things like that. And I like to cook, so that's why I went toward the pinto bean <laughs> seasonings. <laughs> so we love sharing all that stuff out there and let them try and see how they like yeah. it. If they like it, we send them more. Right. Thank y'all for being in a part of our Go Texan family. Yes, sir. It's my wife, Deborah. How are you folks? Good, how are you? Hi, I'm Commissioner Sid Miller. Good to meet you. Aren't y'all in our Go Texan we program? Are. Well, good. Well, thank y'all for doing that. Absolutely. Yeah, we so, got our new labels with the logo on there. Perfect, so perfect. excited about that. <laughs> I've got people stationed down here at our little Go Texan pavilion if you need anything. I heard about it last year when I did the Fort Worth Livestock Show and Rodeo, and they just have a lot of opportunities for exposure for new people to try the products, and so it's been great. I want the buffalo. Buffalo, yes sir. That's been our best seller today. Oh, Is it? Go Texan every day. Well, neighbors, thank you for joining us for another episode of Texas Agriculture Matters. Hey, I hope you enjoyed learning a little bit more about aquaponics and the relationship between water, aquatic life, nutrient dynamics, and plants. Aquaponics systems give agriculture producers an advantage for year-round production, especially for out-of-season produce like leafy greens, herbs, and vegetables. Whether you have a large-scale operation or you're just getting your feet wet, this unique approach to farming is a viable alternative to urban regions who might have limited agriculture land and water resources. Now, as always, I'd like to close by saying thanks to every Texas farmer and rancher who works from sunrise to sunset to help keep our rural heritage alive. Finally, here's today's cowboy logic. Take care of those small expenses. It's the small leaks that sink the ship. <laughs> Thank you. God bless. And remember, friends, Texas agriculture matters. <laughs>